Hello everybody, this is Jason Napalm from the UK and um, I'm back for another Sermons on the Go. Uh, thanks for joining me. Um, what we're going to be looking at is in tonight's Sermons on the Go is loading up on your verses. Loading up on your verses. Now what do I mean by loading up on your verses? <clears throat> Imagine a gun. Um, depending on what gun you use, preferably a gun range, not outside of that. Um, you would have different types types of guns and they take different types of ammo. So you wouldn't load a, uh, a revolver with shotgun bullets, okay? Wouldn't fit. Likewise, you wouldn't load a shotgun with um, AK-47 rounds. And you certainly wouldn't use a sniper round to load into a uh, pistol, okay? So when I'm talking about loading up verses, I'm talking about spiritually speaking, that we as Christians, uh, you know, the Bible says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness, and so forth. And um, we're in a battle as Christians. We're in a battle. We're in a battle against the forces of darkness, the powers of darkness, the devil. We're also in a battle for the mind. We're in a battle for our health. And the Christian life is warfare, okay? Okay. <laughs> Now, what we need to do then is make sure that we're equipped for every situation. Oftentimes, we may see other, see our friends, our Christian friends, who are at the mercy of their faults, or at the mercy of the devil's temptations and his attacks against their life, their circumstances, their situations, and they just don't know what to do. They'll talk to people about it. They may seek prayer about it. And all these are good things, but they they find it hard to stand against the devil on their own. They find it hard to resist the devil. They don't know how to resist the devil. And I know it sounds quite uh, unusual, especially if I'm talking to people who are Pentecostal and um, you know charismatic Christians who know about the power, who know that you know speaking God's word is power and so forth. You know, and in some in some other denominations, that's not really spoken about much, to be honest. I know going to a Baptist church for the last six years, I haven't heard one sermon on the power of uh, the power of uh, scripture in the way of using it as a defensive measure, or using it even as an offensive measure as well against the powers of darkness. It, t it tends to be more of a Pentecostal thing, a bit more of a charismatic. And that shouldn't be really. It's, it just depends what circles you're in as a Christian. Okay, so what I want us to do on the subject of loading up verses, I want us to turn to Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. It's in the Old Testament. And it's <coughs> excuse me, just after Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. Okay, so I'm going to start reading. Joshua 1 verse 8, this book of the law must not depart from your mouth, or it must not leave your mouth, it must always be in your mouth, you must always be speaking the words, I don't mean literally every second of the day, but it needs to be there, ready to be used, okay, it should never leave our mouth in the, in the, in the sense of like, we don't have God's word in our mouth, okay, we should always have our mouth loaded with verses, so to speak. Um, then it goes on to say, So this book of the law must not depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may act carefully according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way successful, and you will be wise. Okay, now this is the uh, this translation is called the Modern English Version, which is the King James Version put into plain English. It's a bit like New King James, to be honest, but worded just a bit slightly different. Um, it, depending on what translation you're reading from, which doesn't matter, uh, because as I'm reading from this, I'm going to explain to you uh, and take the verse apart. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may act carefully according to all that's written in, uh, written in it. Now, when it says to meditate on it day and night, it's not some kind of weird, like, new age um, kind of thing to meditate means to ponder to think upon to consider to um, think how does this affect my life what is this verse saying to me 
Um, how does this verse deal with my situation, with my circumstances? And that's what it means to meditate on it. The way, when we meditate on the scriptures, when we think about what the verses are saying in the Bible, we're analysing our situation according to what the Bible says. And that's what we need to do. We need to meditate on it. And then it says to, to act carefully and act on it. Okay, Like Jesus said, the wise man was the person who heard what he said and did what he said. Not just hearing, but doing also. For then you will make your way successful and you will be wise. Okay, so wisdom will come from spending time thinking, dwelling, pondering on what the Bible says. And it will make you successful. It doesn't mean it's going to make you a millionaire or a success uh, in the world's view. It means it will make you successful in God's ways. Okay? It will make you especially successful in the verses that you are meditating on, the verses that you are thinking on, dwelling on. It will make you successful in that particular situation as well. It will make you wise in that situation. So it's very important, number one, as loading up your verses, is to know your ammunition. Okay? Don't try and put shotgun bullets in a pistol. Okay? Because <laughs> it's not going to work. Imagine getting into a situation, yeah? and you're in a war or something, and someone throws you a gun, they throw you a rifle, okay, and then, you and, and you don't know how to use the rifle, you don't, you haven't even took time to consider what ammunition it needs, and then you just pick up the nearest ammunition pouch, and it's got like shotgun bullets in it, and then you're like trying to stick the shotgun bullets into the rifle, and it's like, it's not fitting, it's not fitting, meanwhile you're getting shot down by the enemy, and you just get overcome, and that's like Christians that are not prepared for the attacks and the onslaughts of the devil and the situation, circumstances and the trials and tests of life, that when they come against us, some of us are trying to load the gun with the wrong ammunition. And in some cases, some of us have got no ammunition. You know, we haven't memorized the verses. We haven't took time to think about what these Bible verses are. We haven't took time to memorize, to equip ourselves. We should prepare ourselves yeah, for every situation with, spiritually speaking, shotgun rounds, pistol rounds, AK-47 rounds, even rocket launchers, <laughs> rocket launcher grenades, you know. Have that ammunition around you. Have it strapped to you, okay? Think of it as an ammunition belt. Any situation that comes, you know, you can't take a tank on with a pistol, okay? So you're going to need a rocket launcher. So there are certain situations in our Christian walk that when the devil comes with temptation, if the devil comes to tempt you with sexual immorality, it's no good saying, oh, wait, oh, oh hang on, hang on, oh, no, verse, oh, no, verse, uh, Philippians 4.19, but God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Yeah. Now, what's that got to do with um, resisting sexual immorality? It hasn't. It's the wrong ammunition, wrong bullet for the gun. Okay? So it's not about um, just memorising just memorizing a verse. But specifically looking into memorizing specific verses to your situation. Okay, let's look at Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4, very famous chapter. I'm using a paper Bible, as you can see, because that's how I roll. I like to uh, use it if possible. I bet <laughs> I said Matthew chapter 4, but I'm thinking actually. That could be Luke chapter 4. Okay. Yep, yeah, here it is. Luke chapter 4. Sorry, Luke chapter 4. Jesus being filled, verse 1, Jesus being filled with the Holy Spirit returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being tempted by the devil for 40 days. During those days he ate nothing, and, when it, and then when they were ended, he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. The devil, taking him onto a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said to him, I will give you all this power and their glory, for it has been delivered to me, and I will give it to whomsoever I will. If you then will worship me, all will be yours. And Jesus answered him, 
Get behind me, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. He brought him to Jerusalem, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning you to preserve you, and in their hands they shall hold you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is said, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. <clears throat> when the devil had ended all the temptations, he departed from him until another time. Now there we see the temptations of Jesus. And how did Jesus resist the devil? He resisted him with the Bible. He resisted him with scripture. He said, it is written, it is written, it is written. And he quoted the verses as well. He didn't just sort of say, oh, it says in the Bible somewhere, uh, blah, blah, blah. I can't quite remember what verse or chapter it is. Uh, they didn't have chapter and verses anyway, so, you know, he wouldn't have said that. But the point is that Jesus had learned and memorised those verses, okay? Um, and so he used them against the devil to resist the devil specifically with specific scripture. Or Jesus um, took the devil out with the correct gun, correct ammunition. So when the devil come along and said, oh, make this stone into bread, he was appealing to Jesus, his physical need, his hunger. And he was uh, trying to appeal to that. Um, notice that Jesus has a particular scripture for that. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And so he had exact verse for the exact temptation. Uh, again, the devil, when he's saying uh, about worshipping him. And Jesus said, get behind me, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God. Him only shall you serve. Jesus is our example here of loading up on verses. Okay. Here's our example here that when the devil comes, the devil even tries to play Jesus at his own game. Uh, the devil comes along and says, throw yourself off the temple because it is written. And then the devil comes out of his gun and then he comes out with his loaded verse. But the devil's got no power. Um, to use scripture he's got no he's got no right authority um, as uh, in as, as a, a member of God's kingdom to use that I mean he's got the freedom to use the verses okay uh, but he hasn't got the legal right as Christians have he hasn't got that power and authority that God has given us as Christians to be able to do that so he thought well Jesus uh, is basically shooting verses at me so I'm gonna shoot one back see how that goes didn't work for him um, Jesus immediately came back, had a verse for that particular temptation and dealt with it there and then. Let's look at her, her Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. Hebrews 4 verse 12 says, For the word of God is alive and active and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit, of joints and marrow, and able to judge the thoughts and intents of the heart. Now, uh, the old King James Version says the word of God is quick and powerful. Now, our understanding of uh, modern language, quick, I mean, it just means fast, don't it? So if we was reading that in modern English, like the King James Version, it would sound like it says, that for the word of God is fast and powerful, okay? But the, the word quick in the King James, the word quick back then means alive. It's really quite weird. Uh, the way the words have changed over the years. But it does literally say that the word is active. It's alive. And it's active. It's live and it's powerful. I like to combine both of them, both of these translations together and say, for the word of God is alive and powerful. I like the word powerful better than active, because active, anything can be active, you know. Um, a clock can be active, but it's not powerful. I prefer alive and powerful. And so, therefore, God's word is powerful. And just like when we load a gun with the bullets, with the gunpowder, explosive power in it, so verses in the Bible are very powerful, very effective to take down the thoughts of the devil. And we're going to find out how to shoot our, to, to fire off our gun in a little bit. Philippians chapter 2, verse 9. Philippians chapter 2, verse 9. Says... Therefore, God highly exalted him and gave him the name which is above every name, 
that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven, things on earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The name above all names, the name of Jesus is very important to come into it when you're quoting scripture as well. It's, uh, to me anyway, it's unnecessary to take any chances. It's not enough, in my mind, to just simply say, when the devil comes and tempts me or uh, situation circumstances come against me, for me just to simply say, I'm not having this circumstance. The Bible says, um, you know, fear not for I'm with you. Be not dismayed for I'm your God. I will help you. Yeah, I will strengthen you. I will hold you with the right hand and my righteousness, okay? Even though, I can, even though the verse is there. I will say, in the name of Jesus Christ, it is written, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will help you. Yes, I will strengthen you. I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. That's what I do. That's our role. And that's what I've learned from particular Christian teachers over the years. Combine the name of Jesus, yeah? Because the scriptures are the ammo, but Jesus' name is the power. Jesus' name legalizes in the spiritual world, in the spiritual realm, the name of Jesus Christ, power, causes them scriptures to go forth. The word of God with power, explosive force, and creates that, that powerful um, effect in the realm of the spirit. And so, therefore, we, we should, I would encourage, I mean, I'm not building a doctrine on it. I'm not saying, oh, but if you don't do it, then the devil ain't going to resist you. But why take a chance? Why just sort of think, well, I don't need to quote verses. I'm just saying the name of Jesus, go. Fair enough. Jesus' name will still work. But it will add a whole lot more faith to your authority and your resistance to the devil by quoting from verses. We... We need to just do what Jesus done. We just need to do the way he did it. Instead of trying to say, oh, well, I don't need to do that. I don't need to do this. Well, Jesus did it. So why wouldn't you want to follow his exact example? Okay, so meditating on verses, yeah? What we need to do is we need to meditate on verses that are specific to our situation, speak them out loud, believe them, and shoot first, ask questions later. Okay? You've often heard of people say, oh, he's a bit of a shoot first, ask questions later. And that could be yeah, sort of conversation wise, metaphorically speaking. In the old Wild West days, it was literal. Person would shoot you. Even nowadays, you know, on our streets, uh, people will shoot first, ask questions later. And it's foolish to do that. But in this context, when a devil comes along, you don't stand and have a chat with him. Uh, you know, Jesus didn't stand and go, oh, uh, yeah, while you're here, let's talk about this, that and the other. He just immediately replied, it is written. And then when the devils were manifesting and Jesus was casting out devils, he didn't say to them, oh, what's your name, by the, what's your name, by the way, and have a whole big conversation. He did say to Legion, what is your name? And he said, we are Legion for we're many. But that was a specific moment, you know what I mean? It's not necessarily that we every time we have to cast devils out of someone that we have to ask their name and get into a whole conversation that was about the longest conversation jesus had in that situation but there are other times when the devils manifested and they said jesus son of god why have you come to torment us for all the time and he was like be quiet i'm not listening to this you've got no right to talk get out go and that is the standard practice of what jesus done there um with the legion demoniac um <laughs> there was a whole bunch of demons in there so the situation no doubt was different anyway so just finishing up now how do we load our gun how do we load up on verses we go we think about our situation in life what are you facing right now what situation are you facing what temptations are you facing fears anxieties any problem Find the appropriate Bible verses to fit the situation. If you're suffering from fear and anxiety, then go to find verses in the Bible that says, Fear not, for I am with you. Isaiah 41 verse 10, for example. Read it, think on it, keep thinking on it, okay? And read it daily. And quote it to the best of your memory in the situation. You might only be able to quote the first bit, Fear not, for I am with you. Okay, that's fine. 
Um, and then you'll be able to quote even more of the verse, and it'll become more effective in the way of building your faith up, okay? Uh, always use the name of Jesus Christ. Always use the name of Jesus Christ, okay? Repeat that twice. But you should always use Jesus' name. When thoughts come into my mind, or the, or the enemy comes against me, or circumstance, I say, in the name of Jesus Christ. No, you don't. For it is written, and then I quote the appropriate scripture, okay? I realise this sermon's on the go. It's longer than usual. But this is an important one to unpack and to speak in thorough detail about it. Okay, so once you find your verse of the situation, again, if it's temptation with fornication, adultery, lust, whatever, find verses on lust. Find verses that say, you know, no you're not, that your body is the temple of God. You know, look up verses that say that those who, who um, practice fornication, adultery and whatever shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Find verses that scare the life out of you. If you need to do that, find verses that condemn, that absolutely put the fear of God into you, for you to quit doing it, okay? It's no good trying to find some, uh, just going around saying, oh, well, I'll, I'll, what I'll do is I'm in sin, I'm practicing sin, but what I'll do is I'll just, uh, oh no, I'll load up on John 1 John 1 verse 9. Um, where it says about if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. There, there we are. Oh, I'll quote that one. No, you do that after you've repented of sin. Okay, You load up on that verse when the devil comes against you and says, oh, you're just a piece of rubbish. You're just, you ain't no Christian, you're fake. You, you, you've been sinning, you've been doing this, you've been doing that. If you've repented and quit doing that, you can go back to the devil with a loaded verse and say, no, it is written, 1 John 1 verse 9. Then quote it. That's the time to, to do that, to look into forgiveness, yeah? You don't look for forgiveness verses when you're actually practising sin and got no intention of quit quitting it, okay? Because you need to look up verses that are going to scare life out of you. We need to look up verses. We need to look up verses. I need to look up verses, and I do. If I'm caught in a situation that is not right with God, I think, right... What I really need to do now is find a verse that's going to really bust my chops, that's going to convict me and make me think, I don't want to do this, I don't want to do this. So load up on them verses. Um, same thing with healing, uh, find healing verses, deliverance, just about anything. Okay, There's a verse in the Bible for every situation, every circumstance. Find the appropriate scripture for that, read it, think on it, ponder on it say it out loud apply it to your situation then use it in jesus name and say in the name of jesus christ i come against fear in the name of jesus christ i come against temptation i come against that sin for it is written loaded verse comes out shoot first ask questions later don't get into a conversation with the devil when he says oh yeah but you know you've only been a christian for five minutes you've only been a christian for a little while when i first got saved there was still some things I was still carrying on, okay? But there was a change in the beginning, albeit quite small to start with. But the point is that God, when God spoke to me and said, this is wrong, I obeyed him and said, right, okay. And my flesh didn't always want to obey that. I was like, oh, really? Like, I'm so used to doing this all my life. I don't really know if I can even do that. But then when God highlighted to me through verses in the Bible and through other Christians telling me, and this is important, do you think? We need to listen to other Christians that attend us and we're doing something wrong. We need to listen to them. You know, if you're not doing anything wrong, then don't fear them. But if we're doing something wrong, then yeah, yeah. Prepare to get upset. Prepare to get offended with people when they start um, coming up with chapters and verses and everything else and saying, you know, you know what you're doing isn't right with God. And just sort of think of it, iron sharpens iron. You know, I'd rather be judged on earth, to be honest, than judged in front of God. When I stand before God, I don't want to stand before him and him say, oh, by the way, you was doing this and you was doing that because you didn't listen to people telling you is wrong. Do you get what I mean? So there we go. OK, well, praise the Lord. I hope this has blessed you and helped you out. Um, I will share this to Facebook in a moment. God bless you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And uh, yeah, please share. Please share and subscribe to my channel for God's glory. Thank you. God bless you. In Jesus Christ's holy, mighty name. Amen.